You are listening to the Wi-Fi Ninjas podcast, where we talk about wireless technology. Here are your hosts, Matt Daring and Matt Starling. Hey everyone, Matt here, and today I am joined by Guillermond Rand. Guillermond, how are you? I'm very fine. I'm good. Good. Thank you very much for joining me today. But first, actually, I think uh, congratulations is in order, Mr. Cisco Champion, Mr. Rookie of the Year, bursting yourself onto the old Wi-Fi scene. Yes, thank you. It's uh, been a great ride the last uh, two or three years. Yeah, um, in... I have learned, learned a lot. Yeah, I, I remember us meeting in uh, WLPC 2019 in Prague, kind of when you were just really introducing yourself to the uh, community. And I think you had prepared, or you said you, uh, it was at the uh, conference that you said that you were going to start preparing something to give back to the community then, wasn't it, around your airtime calculator? Yes, I built the calculator and presented it at the VLPC in Prague. and. Uh, distributed uh, months later and uh, I think it's about 2,000 downloads till now wow. so I think uh, a lot of people are using it out in the community. Yeah that's a it's, a, it's an amazing tool and I'm going to be completely honest I've downloaded it and then I've had a little play around with it and then I haven't used it as much as what I should have so I thought what better way for me to learn how to use this calculator properly and efficiently and to have the master himself explain it to me and show me and at the same time can show everybody else because it is an amazing resource a great tool especially if you're wanting to learn more about the the frames and how if you're you know maybe studying for like your cwap uh this can really really help you so that is what we're going to be talking about today german is kindly taking time out of his very busy day to give us a demonstration on his airtime calculator but first of all, you mentioned there's 2,000 downloads. Where can the uh, people watching or listening download your airtime calculator from, German? Uh Later, when we're sharing the screen, I will show the link to my website. It's at uh, germanrand.com. I will not pronounce it in letter because I don't know how to do it, but <laughs> I will show it uh, on the screen later. Uh, and I also on and Twitter, where it's linked to my web page. Okay, perfect. What I'll do then, I'll take my face off the screen and I'll bring in your shared screen and then let you let you go from there, German, if, that's, if that sounds good for you. Yep, yeah, that's... Okay, I think... Oh, let me uh, mess that up one second. We'll do it the right way around. Uh, I can tell I haven't done this for... a. A little while. Let me um, put your shared screen, and I'll bring you in. And I'll go to like this. That's the way I wanted to do it. Okay, we are good and ready to go now. So we can see your Wireshark, and we can see your iPad. Yes, I will use both both uh, Wireshark, my calculator, and uh, OneNote for iPad on my iPad. As you said, my name is German Rowan from Norway. I have been in the Wi-Fi community for about three or four years. I think it started with uh, attending the ECEC course in Oslo back in 2017. Keith Parson had a course. And uh, during this period, I have done a lot of wireless certification, CDO to NADP, AP, SP, all those are also renewed one time. I have a Cisco CCNP in and router search and service provider from before. I'm Loravan Fundamental. I have done the Juniper Mist uh, associate uh, certification. As you said, I was won the Wi-Fi Award Rookie of the Year 2021. And I also was the finalist in the Cisco IT Blog Award 2020 for best analysis, and I also are a Cisco champion. Yeah, congratulations. So. That's a uh, a healthy profile you've got there in such a short amount of time. A lot of uh, accreditation. So hats off to you. That must have been a lot of studying that you've done, German. Yes, and uh, <laughs> what's funny, it's uh, mostly uh, 
have a hobby I do most of this at my free time. And um, luckily my boss is um, very glad that I'm doing it so I can have my lab at my office. And uh, yes, we have uh, bought some of the stuff I need to to learn this. Mm -hmm. So okay. I have my own wireless lab with uh, where I do a lot of, especially Wi-Fi 6 with the May analysis and go down to the five level of AX and AC. Yeah, having a lab is so crucial. I found for my studies being out, you know, reading theory and watching videos is great, but when you actually lab stuff up and play around with things, break things and things don't work how you expect to, then you've got to troubleshoot them. That's how you really learn, I think, personally. Yes. So, shall we go on with the calculator? Let's do it. Yeah. I made this calculator mainly because I actually wanted to win the Rookie of the Year back in 2019 and uh, uh, decided to make something awesome to the Wireless LAN Professional Conference in Prague and uh, it became the calculator. So, but let's uh, go and look at the basic. When we are capturing data, uh, uh, so we can see in the Wireshark, this is a typical TSOP, TXOP with the protection frame, request to send, clear to send. We have one QoS data frame and the block hack, a typical TXOP. And it seems that the data goes very fast and that it looks like a very efficient network where the data actually go very fast. But what Wireshark doesn't show, it's all the thing around. In, in the background. So let's bring back my uh, iPad. So then you can see the iPad. We can indeed. Yeah. So what does this GSB look like? First of all, we have all the the frames we see in Wireshark. Request to send. Not the best handwriting, but it's okay. Clear to send. The data. And at last, the block acknowledge. That's what Wireshark tells us. But from our CWAP studies, we know that it lot more contents into these frames. First of all, we have the legacy preamble. We are preceding each and every frame. Uh, this preamble is used for synchronization and backward compatibility between the files. We have a fixed duration and some contents uh, like uh, short training field, long training field, and the signals. This legacy preamble we do have in each and every frame in Wi-Fi. These control frames, request to send, clear to send, and block acknowledge are sent at a legacy files, and in 5 gigahertz, it's 802.11a. So they ha only have this legacy preamble, but the data could be sent with a N, AC, or AX frame format. And all those frame formats have their own preamble. So if we say this is a VHT frame or AC, we have a VHT preamble in the data frame right after the legacy preamble. The rest of the, each of the four frames are symbols transmitting or transferring data bits between the two parties. But as we can see, there are some space between each frame. This is where we have the short interframe space. Let's find a color, the green one. In between those frames, we have SIFs, short interframe space. 
sorry. And before the station or what we call the initiator of the TXB can send this frame, you have to do a contention process. First part of the contention process is either a diffs or if the data are sent as a QoS frame is what we call a AIFS, arbitration into frame spacing, that can have different duration depending on what, what kind of access class the data are sent with. Access classes are voice, video, best effort, and background. When this period are done, we have at last the, what color do you not have done? The random backup timer. This is where the, the initiator picks a value, contention window value, and used it to wait before its transmission. So this is basically basically all the parts in a TXP. Most of them are very have a very standard duration, but the data could have a very variable duration depending on how much data it shall be sent. And for short or small byte sizes, this could be very, very small. And if you send a lot of data, it could be very, very long, have a long duration. So that, that is what I actually are showing in my calculator. So now let's go set set this same TXB in, in my calculator. I hope this is uh, big enough. I know. The scenarios to the left, scenario one and two are for the AN and AC files or uh, non-HD, OFDMA, OFDM, HD or VHD. So let's I have put all the numbers from the TXP in. The data frame are sent with access category best effort. We choose a contention window between 0, 1 and 15. I choose 8. Our control frames are sent with 24 megabit. All of the yellow cells, you can change the content by the uh, drag down arrow or what they call and choose different uh, values. So our TXB are using 24 megabit. The data frame is a 20 megahertz VHT sent with MCS8, two special frame and the short guard interval. As you may remember from our short, this speed rate for the data is 173. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I'm on the shared. Can you scroll your calculator to the left slightly, please? Oh, okay. All right, what's happened now? Uh, yeah, if you go back to the calculator and just scroll it to the left, because we're on the, uh, what I'm getting here, I'm not quite capturing the full picture. Uh, so, so everything in Wireshark was fine, but yeah, if you can just go... Uh, that's Wireshark, I have to find Excel. Now. Yeah, okay. it was Excel. It was Excel. If you could just scroll it... your Excel to the left. Uh, it's what's minimized out to... Uh, if you just click on Excel it, again. It disappeared. Uh, I think I have to open it once more. Uh, Um, and we're just going to pick back up from the calculator because uh, I noticed that we wasn't quite capturing the full picture there. So sorry about that, German Technical issues from my end, probably. But we are back now and we can see the full calculator. Okay, yeah, let's start again. Um, this calculator has four different scenarios. 
so now we're going to do it for legacy files or a n and a c and so now we're over to right is for a two 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 dot eleven a x or downlink OFTMA. So let's put the data from the TXP into scenario one. I've already done it. So the data frame is the best effort data frame. You have put, we have select a contention window value of eight. Data frame, no, oh, sorry, control frame are sent with 24 megabit. Data frame is a 20 megahertz VHD frame sent with MCS8 two special stream and the short guard interval. That gives us a speed rate for a data frame of 173 megabit. When we put all those values in here, we can, sorry, we have to go a little down. Here we set in the byte sizes for each and every frame. The request to send is always 20 byte. Clear to send is 14 byte. The block acknowledge are 32. And we put in the amount of bytes in our data frame. Wireshark, if we go down to the, um, uh, what we call the MSTU, it was 68 byte. But since it sent in an AMPD frame format, we have to add 42 bytes for the MAC header and the CCMP header, since it's also encrypted. So the total size for the, the MPDU is 110. We turn on protection. Also, okay, we you are using request to send and clear to send. Yep. Down here, all the small parts are draw in the OneNote are showed under duration for each of them. And down here, we visualize the full TXP. And if you look at the small green one, this is where we send the 110 bytes MPDU. All the rest of the parts are overhead and contention and all kind of that. And as I said, when we look at Wireshark, we saw the data frame was sent at 173 megabit, and, but this is only this small part. All the other are necessary at the overhead in the protocol. Yeah, and, and if we just pause for a second here, German, because this is uh, an amazing visual representation to be able to clearly see that, you know, just this very small green little box is the data frame the data of the frames are being sent at that 173 megabits per second whereas everything else is being either sent at the legacy rate or what has been configured at the uh, minimum data rate for the ssid that's in use so this is an amazing tool to be able to visualize actually you know what parts of the frames are being sent at what different speeds yes and that uh, I, there were two scenarios, and I changed a, a small piece in the scenario two. It's instead of using two spatial stream, you are use send the same amount of data with one spatial stream. We are actually lowering the speed rate with half. Do you live in a uh, dodgy area in Norway? Is that what the alarm's about, or fi uh, fire alarm, or? So, yes, it's a. Um, thief alarm okay. someone went into area you're not going to start that. catching on fire or anything are you going live on the uh, recording okay uh, that's happened all the time <laughs> but but the difference uh, go from two space stream to one space stream we have a slightly smaller bht preamble and a little longer duration for our mpdu but by only by halving the data speed, the impact for the TXP are actually minimal. Minimal. You can't see the difference. And if you see in the table above, we are sending 110 bytes at a very, very high 
data rate, but the effective data rate for the, speed, for the TXP is actually down to 2.9 megabit per second because of all the overhead. And uh, let's play a little. Uh, this TXP have a minimum basic rate of 24 megabit. Let's go up and change it to what usually been what's the most common value six six megabit for request to send clear to send and the block acknowledge and then you can go down and see the difference in the duration for a txop so here you can see yeah the yeah the duration for request to send clear to send and block act are increased but the rest is the same and the duration have increased about uh, 80 microsecond and that um, does have impact of the on the air time utilization because now every base every control frame or management frame are sent with six megabits instead of 24 beacon probably response uh, association and all that kind of frames. So here you can try almost every type of setup in a network and see the impact of for the duration of the takes a bit. Yeah, this is a, a amazing tool. Thank you so much, Guillermo, for creating this for the community, especially for people that are trying to get their head around, you know, um, potentially that the uh, CWAP from CWMP analysis protocol uh, certification. I wish this tool was around when I was going through it um, for myself, Kim, and it would have come in very, very handy. Yes, I hope, um, I have to say, Aruba uh, made, I uh, uh, got the inspiration from the Aruba calculator, but um, uh, that is not so precise as as mine because I um, go deeper into the file format and uh, there's different frame or duration depending on type of the head uh, VHD, HD, file type, number, spatial slims and kind uh, stuff like that. So how long did it take you to create and build this calculator, Gilman? Uh, the um, legacy part uh, for a and an ac was not so very long because actually the making the calculator was quite quite fast the the challenge is to learn the stuff mm -hmm. uh, i before i made it i have sat almost half a year reading uh, the book called the next generation wireless lands that give all the information I needed for the legacy files. What was the challenge was actually when I decided to also make the, a calculator for AX or especially the downlink OTMA. For, then I had to buy the, the AX draft and uh, read through it uh, sometimes to learn, uh, learn the downlink OTMA frame format and how the all the parts are put together with uh, new fr frame format types uh, new request to send and this was done long before we were capturing the ax that data so i only had the, the draft to look at to try to understand and build the calculator so that took about uh, uh, let's say three or four months. Yeah, a lot of uh, data to try and read and interpret there. Yes, and I have to read it uh, several times. Mm -hmm. I have to read chapter by chapter and go back forward. And uh, yeah, you understand a new new part every time you read read it. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else that you would like to show, Gemin? Yeah, if I only got my uh, activated my um, 
my uh, iPad again. I can uh, have some other thing. You sure. can. I had prepared uh, a walkthrough of a aggregated frame, but uh, but uh, what do you want to hear? Aggregated frame or OFDMA? You can uh, choose. Uh, I don't mind. If you've got your iPad working, we can do the aggregated frame, or if your iPad's not working, we can talk about AX. I can do the aggregated frame because that's actually very, I would say, it's funny. <laughs> All right, let's do the aggregated frame then. <laughs> Let's first uh, find a Wireshark capture sure. for an ag aggregated frame. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we can see your Wireshark capture now, Yemen. Yes, uh, we can have a walkthrough of an aggregated frame. Um, as we know, in VHC, all the, f the data is sent with uh, a MPDU frame format, and this is a capture of actually a speed test. I with request to send, clear to send, have a lot of data frame, and at last the block acknowledged. But let's have a, and each frame are either 1,316 bytes or 68 bytes, but that is only the MSDU, MSDU part, not with the MAC header. So let's see what this looks like. Now we have uh, the, the AMPDU, I have to find my, as I said, uh, start with Lega, See preamble. We have the VHT preamble. Service field. So this is 16 bits. Always service field is always sent first when we start sending data bits. Then we have the AMPDU subframe one, subframe two. And so it's going to the end of the end of frame bits or padding. End of is very ugly, but I hope you can understand it. If we go into the A, one of the A and produce subframes, it consists of a MPDU delimited. The MAC, sorry, MAC header. We have the, since it's encrypted, we have the CCMP header uh, for the setup of the encryption or actually for decrypting the frame. Then the, the data which are coming from the upper layer in the OSI protocol and at last the FCS. If we split it further down, we have the M P D U M P D U the limited. Sorry, we have frame control from the MAC header, duration, the three addresses, which are the uh, receiver address, transmit address, or either the destination or source address. We have sequence control, the QoS field, and then the CCMP I showed above, MSTU and FCS. 
FCS is FCS is a part of the MAC header, but it's always been sent at the uh, behind the MSDU. If we go in and look the how big each of them these parts are, the MPDU delimiter are four frame control two bytes, duration two bytes, address eighteen bytes, sequence control two, QS two, CCMP eight. In our TXP, the data was either sixty-eight or thirteen sixteen bytes, and at last four bytes for the FCS. If we summarize all this, we, we took those part, you have 42 bytes. So this is the AMPD subframes. As we see, one of those lines in the Wireshark picture is this AMPD subframe. If we go into Wireshark and down to packet details, we will find almost everything except the MPDU delimiter. Uh, this is a four byte um, subfield which are using to separate each AMPDU subframe and those are processed down in the phi header or the phi layer. If you summarize this together with my TXOP, we will have total amount of byte of 50,469. If you put that into my calculator, so I found the right one, and I do the same as we do the first time by sliding it to the left. Is it? That's is perfect. It, is it? You can see it. Okay. Yep. I have put all my data in this calculator, the 50,469 bytes, uh, all the other things are above. And it, it is visualized like this. And now we will see the data is much have a much longer duration in relation to the overhead and if we look very closely into the table above uh, this was sent with mc4 it's it's is it is 80 uh, this data was sent with 86.7 megabit for a data part and the effective data rate is on 81. So when you are sending aggregated frame, the TXP or the transmission is much more efficient. But what I actually wanted to show, you can also use this to calculate the network allocation vector because if you summarize the part from after the request is sent down to the end of the frame, you got a value down here, which are 4,814 microseconds, and this value should be found, should be found back in the network allocation vector for the request to send, and this is the same value. So, what I'm trying to say, you can use this calculator and go down to the very small bit and reverse engineer almost everything and use this calculator to find out, find out if your calculations are correct or not. So it's a, you can, yeah, you can do almost everything with the calculator and uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you 
so much, German. That's a very good insight into how people can uh, use the tool and some great demonstrations there. Oh, is it? Was there anything else that you wanted to show? Or was was that all for today? I think maybe, maybe not. Um, the calculator have also have. Um, we can calculate o downlink OFTMA. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you could just slide uh, to the left again, please. I can I, uh, will find it first. Sure. This one um, and do this. Like this. Nearly there. If you could just scroll slightly to the to the left. Left. Um, yeah, on your slider. Uh, the other direction, sorry. Left. Is it okay now? Uh, a little bit more to the left. Or if you put in one more column, it should do the trick. Uh, no, so we can't see the where it says AIFS and slash DIFS. So we need to see more okay. in the other direction. To, so if you just if to... you just scroll your spreadsheet to the left, it should should solve that. Uh, yeah, now we can see it. We can see it. Okay. For UFDMA. Or downlink of the MA, and uh, if I can have my screen back on. Uh, yeah. So, uh, in this example, I have put the same 110 byte frame uh, we saw in the first TXB in, uh, in a scenario where the Frame are subdivided in four resource units on a 20 megahertz channel. I will not go very deep into it, but if we go down to the visualization, we can see that if we are send, when we are sending this frame with VHD frame format, the duration of the TXP is uh, 370 microseconds. If you are using OFTMA and subdivide the channel in four resource units on a 20 mega channel, we have the duration of the TXP will increase in this example, of let's say 100 and 100 microseconds. By looking at this, you maybe can not easy to see why why UFDMA is more efficient. But if you use the same duration and and put it on a drawing, when we are sending this frame with legacy of the May or VHC and we send it to four station. We have to send it to first we have to send it to station A, then we send it to station B, station C and station D. And when we send the frame to those four, we can start again at Station A. That's uh, how legacy of them are sending data. But for OFDMA, the duration for this same amount of data are longer, but now we can send the same frame to all four stations in parallel. So after we have sent one TXP, we can send the, the next TXP to this same station so just make it 
simple. In this time period, we have sent one TXOP to VHT station in the and with both the May A uh, sent three sorry three TXOP to the same station only by using OFDMA. So it's easy to see why OFDMA are much more efficient, especially for small frame sizes. And that's also one of the reasons why AX also are called high efficiency. But the challenge is to implement it. Mm -hmm. I have one, uh, I will show one capture I have received from Mr. Isaac Konikov. I hope this is big enough. Um, yep. we, uh, yeah, I can see it. I, I can. Uh, here we are using multi user request to send, clear to send, and send the data with multi user frame format. Yes. But yep. Just, uh, we don't receive block acknowledge. Uh, and if we look at the uh, sequence number, we go down to the next TXOP, we recognize the same sequence number. So now the OFDMA AP are resending the same TXOP. No rec block acknowledge, we are doing it again. And again, and again, and we we'll go down to, I think I'll try it six times. After six retries, the AP are tired of using multi-user with the May. So we go over to using single user with our standard legacy request to send, clear to send, same sequence number, and bang, block acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And next time you start again, you try using multi user, retry, retry, retry. That's it's, a, it's an exam, example of how difficult it is, is, it is to implement with DMA in real world. Because here, the receiver don't, by some reason, you don't recognize the frame and don't send uh, block acknowledge and we retry and retry go over to single user and bang the takes big goes to the receiver so typical example of the difficulty to implement OFDMA yeah that's going to be the the challenge half the fun but definitely for when you're using you know voice over wireless we've got very small bytes the frames are actually sending using 11ax the high efficiency is going to be in theory you know more efficient and better you know, performance on our on our wireless network so it's really good to be able to visualize that and see that but uh yeah it's going to be tricky to to implement yes and um, that was actually what i have prepared to for today Perfect. Thank you so much, Guillermo, for taking your time to show us this. If um, anybody watching or listening, they want to, you know, find out a little bit more about yourself, where can they go to get in contact with you? I have my own blog at yermunrawan.com and I also at Twitter at the same German Rowan. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And that's where we can also find the airtime calculator? At the yes, where the blog is, uh, at uh, my website, at the uh, all both on the right side and up in the header. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Germund. It was uh, really great to see your airtime calculator and hear it firsthand from the master that created it. So, thank you so much for your time, and I will speak to you soon. Hope you all enjoyed. Yeah, thank you. It's very very fun, and just, just mm. ask me. I can. Um, I'm also at Slack and uh, other social medias and uh, will answer on the items I 
No, a lot of. Mm, thank you so much, Gamond. Okay.